afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Board of Trustees meeting and the joint meeting with the Ames um, uh, Foundation Board. Uh, the Foundation Board uh, having been what we did in the work session. Um, today is September 14th, 2022. A couple of uh, items before we start. Um, please do use your microphones. Uh, in this big building, it's, uh, it's difficult to hear uh, because of the space. And um, so, um, and the other thing is, I want to thank uh, Ames Flight Center for hosting the meeting today. And with that, thank you. With that, I will call the meeting to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, Third item on the agenda, approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I have a motion. I second the motion. I have a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Next is the consent agenda, which includes the minutes of the August 10, 2022 district board meeting and the appointment of hearing officers. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Second that. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Next is public comment. Do we have anyone for public comment? We have no public comments today. Thank you very much. There being no public comment, and we will proceed. The presentation from guests and representatives to the board. And I'll welcome Shannon McCaslin, Dean of Students. Yay, I'm so excited to be here. Good afternoon. I think we have a slide that's going to go up here. Uh, today, I have the privilege of introducing you to two students who have been all in at Ames, most recently via the Public Piano Painting Project. Both Ozzy Styles and Cynthia Aguilar behind me have invested many hours between April and August uh, on this project. The pianos started as their blank canvas. And these two students worked with many others to develop the concept for each piano. They co-designed with an entire student team that I got to meet recently. And then they spent a lot, a, many students spent a lot of days this summer in 90 plus degree weather painting these beautiful pieces. Um, so you can see the photos there, uh, but I thought you'd enjoy hearing from each of them uh, about the impact of this project and how their AIM story connects with it. So we're gonna start with Cynthia. Hello everyone, my name is Cynthia Aguiar. Thank you. <clears throat> my name is Cynthia Aguiar and I go to school here at Ames and I'm actually gonna be graduating here soon. So once I heard about this piano project, I was really excited. I really wanted to leave a mark behind and I love doing art, I'm an artist and I love creating things and making a lot of art with people and just have a really good time. So we have made two pianos, a Colorado themed piano and a mythological piano. The Colorado theme piano is mainly Colorado native. It has the Mesa Verde on the bottom and it has uh, the Colorado flag on top. So if you're tall, you'll be able to see it. And if you're not, well, <laughs> promise it's there. Uh, we also have cornfields and cows also on that piano. On the mythological piano, it's more of a storytelling based of cultures from around the whole world. So at the bottom of the piano, if you can kind of see up there, there's a Orpheus playing his lyre to Cerberus, the three-headed dog. And throughout the whole piano in the mythological one is stories woven into it. And all of us artists really wanted to make a space for people to enjoy their time and at school. And actually the other day I was at school hanging around the piano and well, 
I heard somebody playing the piano and it sounded so amazing and it looked really cool to see people enjoying their day in the middle of a school day. So that was really awesome to see. And um, this is Ozzy, the other painter who's painting with me and I'll let her take it away. Good morning. I'm Ozzy Styles, and I'm majoring in animation right now for my first year at Ames, and I was one of the painters for this project. What I worked on was specifically the nature piano with the help of my talented painting partner, Cynthia. She really helped made the experience of painting in 90 degree weather a lot more fun than it should have been, so a huge thank you for her. <laughs> I am someone who was into very different forms of art growing up, from being a performer in plays to loving music and playing violin for about eight years to drawing about all my life since I was little that when I heard about this opportunity to paint a piano, I immediately jumped at it knowing how great this could be. If it is one thing I learned from art is that in its many forms, it can bring so much to a community. It can help make it more fun, comfortable, enjoyable. It can make it a place, something where someone wants to be around. From simple human curiosity to see what an F major note could sound like, to someone playing a tune to a listener, it is just something that is known. Art brings us together. I am honored to be able to bring that here at Ames for our little community. I cannot express enough how excited I get to see our piano entertain someone's day a little bit, even just a little bit, while they can possibly entertain others as well, or maybe just have a moment with themselves with their little piece of art that they make, because after all, art is subjective. And lastly, a huge thank you to everyone that helped our teams when we needed it. Through making this project alone, we made this little community of our own from very fond memories and last to remember by, again, dying in the heat. <laughs> but I hope there will be future ones for people to discover themselves through projects like this. So with all that, thank you for this opportunity and I hope there's more to come. That awesome, as most of us in the room know, Andrew Canetta is the one, our former student body president who, uh, who dreamed this up. Today he's in class, uh, but he and the entire sale office and the piano project team would like to extend a big thank you to three people who we couldn't have done this without. And so um, they picked up the pianos from donors. Stand up, Mike, David, and Kevin Cross. They picked up the pianos from donors. They stored them, they moved them. They designed the covers for them and the list goes on and on. So thank you to the three of you. Um, seriously, pretty cool. I hope you think it's cool too when you walk by those. Um, so lastly, I'd like to recognize the rest of the piano painters. Um, their names all up on the screen. I think actually I forgot a, a, a few here, but I'd like to recognize them. Not only Ozzy and Cynthia, but Grace Stevens is in the room. I know Stephanie and Jeff stand up. Let's give all the piano painters a hand. Danielle, Danielle, you painted. We have gifts for them. And we have gifts uh, that I will give, uh, I'll give Ozzy and Cynthia this gift as well, but this is a, uh, a little framed piece with uh, pictures of all angles of each of the pianos signed by Dr. Bornstein. So thank you to the community of students who really made this happen. This is cool. This is cool. Thanks everybody. That was awesome. Uh, it's been fun to watch this piano uh, project progress since Andrew first introduced it to the board and the rest of the college. So it's uh, it's really been uh, great. And to see this come to fruition like this with the, the great artistic uh, contributions of the team is, is super. So from the college and the board, thank you very, very, very much. Next is a Loveland campus update. Heather, Heather left Melchett. <laughs> Heather is the executive director of the Loveland campus. Welcome, Heather. Thank you. Um, I do have a couple slides, so do I just say next slide? Yep. Okay. Thanks, John. Um, while he's getting up, but yes, welcome to Loveland. And I love hearing always the excellence at Ames. It's always inspirational and reminds me why I love my job. So it's great to hear it. Let's see if we're going there. Okay, next slide's fine, John. So just a little bit about Loveland campus. Um, 
I'll just talk about who our students are and the activities that are happening on campus and in the community with the partnerships. And the next one, please. I'll just keep going and Barry will catch up. All right, so I have two columns with the credit students and non-credit, because as you know, we've added some continuing ed offerings to our campus, as well as all the satellite campuses and the main campus. But with the first column, you can see that 50% of our students are 18 to 22 years old, as represented in the pictures below. Those are all our first fall year students um, that joined us. 50% uh, are first generation and 30% Latinx Hispanic. And then on the non-credit side for continuing ed, we don't collect the same demographics, so it's not always apples to apples, but you can see that 49% are 50 and older and the majority of students are female. Next slide, please, John. And people are always asking, what are the most popular classes, especially with the continuing ed classes? But I will start on the, the credit side. So on our campus, we have the Associate of Arts degree, Associate of Science degree, Business Transfer, Associate of Arts degree, Basic Animation Certificate. But we also provide the general education requirements and the prereqs for allied health degrees and certificates. So you can see on the left that most of the popular classes are those gen ed requirements. But with the first two, two bullet points, the computer science classes are also very popular. And then on non-credit, this is true for Loveland campus, but also for all the campuses, these are our most popular classes. And they're mostly the personal enrichment classes. But with continuing ed, we're also offering professional development and uh, certification prep classes. You might be asking, what's that first class and the first bullet point? So I learned, first of all, it's pronounced Tai Chi Cha. And this class is a different version of Tai Chi. It actually is a simpler version. It goes through 19 movements in one pose, where our Tai Chi class can do 108 movements in a class. Next slide. Okay, so just some pictures and some little storytelling to go over what's happening in Loveland. The top two pictures are actually of our uh, Loveland Student Art Show. That top left one is last spring. Um, and this student art show is open to all of Ames. Students can apply. It's a juried and judged art show. And um, that left picture, we had over 100 people on campus that night between friends, family, and community members coming to see the art because we open up the show on Loveland's Night on the Town art walk. And even a community member offered to buy one of the students' pieces, which was really rewarding. Um, and then we have um, Best in Show, um, plus other winning categories, but Best in Show is the best piece and they win up to a three credit scholarship to Ames. So that top right picture is Hannah Wolf, and she won last year, and she's standing next to her piece that won. Um, we couldn't do this without our partnership with Artworks Loveland, which is two doors down from our campus, and that's a studio space and gallery for established artists. And in our partnership, not only do they help us with the jury, the judging, and the materials and the equipment to put on the show, they provide us with two professional artists at other times of the year where we open up for night on the town art walks and invite people in. And then we get to keep the art on the walls for the semester. So it's really giving our Ames community access to art and culture. And now we have also passes. We have eight passes for anyone at Ames plus friends or family associated with Ames to their paid events. We get discounted tickets. So if you're ever interested, it's first come first serve and you can bring your friends, family to the paid events at Artworks. Other partnerships in the community that we're working with. So for example, our perk department helps us with the Chilson Recreation Center down the street and providing passes for our students to go use the rec center. Since we don't have a gym on campus, students can go use the rec center for free. Um, and then another partnership we're working on is with Creator Space next door literally next door to our campus, that's a maker space. And so we're gonna be partnering with them to offer workshops in classes like robotics, programming, tool, safety with tools, um, carpentry, 
And so we're using their resident expertise, their equipment in the space since we don't have it on our campus. And we'll be looking to do that next semester. Oh, one more, go back one more time. So the bottom left picture, it's actually an older picture, but it really helps to represent what we're doing now with we are cross-listing some non-credit classes with our credit classes where appropriate. So for example, we're doing this with studio art, physical education, we're trying with creative writing, and some of the one credit electrical classes in the industrial tech area. And this is where we've heard from our community where they want classes in these areas, but we also have them on the credit side, so why not work together? And what's been great is it's boosted enrollment, and the feedback from everyone involved is it's very well received and everyone's having um, a great experience in the classroom. And last, that bottom right picture is our fall-in from a few years back. But I mentioned it because our fall-in is tomorrow. And that is from 11 to 1.30. It's actually indoors now. We hold it in the student lounge, learning commons, and in the hallways and the classrooms around it. So if you can join us, it would be great. All right, finally, thanks, John. It's the last slide. <laughs> I couldn't, I really need to give a shout out and thanks to the Loveland team, um, but it's, it's the whole college. We work with every department to make the campus thrive. And so big thanks to Karen Hankey, Megan Bouvet, Rena Mitchell is our continuing ed program coordinator. Julie Rupp is a temp that helps us out. Kim Moorhart and Kyle Richardson are part-time learning technicians, learning commons technicians. And I believe um, Ryan Oschlager was on there. He's the, the roaming IT tech for our satellite campuses. And then our security team were the last two that were. And without them, it wouldn't be a, a great environment and campus for our students. So thank you. Thank you so much, Heather. Uh, it's so great to hear from you. Are there any questions of Heather? Any comments? Okay, well, again, thank you. It's always great to hear from you. Thank you. Great to see you. Okay, next on the agenda is representatives to the board. Uh, first up, the Student Government Association, Danielle Irwin. Welcome, Danielle. Thank you. Greetings, esteemed members of the board, cabinet members, Chair Oxiger, Dr. Rothmer, Dr. Bornstein, and everybody else that's here. Um, I am honored to be here again and to share this space with you. So thank you all for having me. It is hard to believe that it is already the middle of September. I can't believe time is going by so quick, but the fall semester has already begun and students are buzzing around the campus. It, time just seems to be flying by. Our new student leaders are hard at work and they are implementing their leadership skills to provide excellent programs for our students and the community. We have already experienced some of the amazing events that the student leaders have organized. We kicked off the fall semester with Fallen, which has been a huge success campus-wide. Uh, we had over 600 attendees at the Greeley Fallen. We had 240 Windsor attendees, 150 Fort Lupton attendees, and we were even able to grab the attention of some future AIMS students. <laughs> um, there were so many fun activities and such a wonderful presence at Fallen that we caught the high of some high schoolers that were passing by the campus. They saw all the fun and they decided to come see what was happening. One of our SAIL members had the pleasure to chat with them for some time. Um, they, the high schoolers had no idea that Ames had so much to offer. And um, due to the excellent resources that Ames provides and how welcome they felt at Fallen, they have decided that they would like to enroll at Ames. <laughs> it was also mentioned that students really enjoyed the pulled pork sandwiches and the shaved ice. <laughs> Um, and I know it was just previously mentioned, but if you did not get a chance to stop at any of the Fallens, the Loveland Fallen is tomorrow. Um, it will be from 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And if your schedules allow it, we hope to see you there. Um, in addition to successful programming, the Campus Activity Board held a Narcan training on September 12th that had a huge turnout. Now, this, this training provided information regarding 
the opioid crisis in Willow County, what Narcan is, why it exists, and how to use it. There were over 24 attendees at this event, and everyone who participated left with the information and tools that they may need to save future lives. Um, we hope to provide more trainings like this in the future, and when these events are have been set, I will provide dates and times. Also, keep your eyes out for SGA and CAP across the campus. The student leaders will be staffing tables in celebration of Constitution Day all week long. In collaboration with New Era, it is our hope to raise awareness regarding student voter registration and to promote the All-In Challenge software where students can learn about important issues that are affecting their community. The students can sign up for the software and will be notified based on their areas of, areas of interest. This will also allow them to know what certain bills are coming up for vote on the federal level. Additionally, I would like to formally invite you all to the first ever Ames Fall and Field Day. This event will take place on Friday, September 16th at the baseball field behind the Perk Building at 3.30 p.m. We will have lawn games, food, and social interaction. It's supposed to be a really fun time, so if you're available, please stop on by. Invite all of your friends and families and help us welcoming, welcome our new and returning students. Um, another wonderful event that is worth mentioning is the Artie's Bazaar that will take place on September 28th from 11 to 1 p.m. Now, this is an opportunity for external businesses and resources to, um, to have a booth and to connect with students to provide more about what they provide, their information and their resources. So it'd be a great way to get to know your outside community members. And with that being said, thank you so much for your time. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Thank you all again for this wonderful opportunity. I look forward to seeing you all in future months. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. Great report as always. Uh, next is Ames Faculty Association, Julia Weinberg. Chair Oxenden, members of the board, Dr. Borenstein, Dr. Rothmer, CAP, student government, members of cabinet, faculty and friends, good afternoon. My name is Julia Weingart and I am your new AFA BOT representative and it is both a pleasure and a privilege to be speaking to you all this afternoon. Let's start off with some of these amazing accomplishments that our faculty has been demonstrating at Ames. Now we can start to feel the cool air, cool weather in the beginning of the morning, and we're starting to feel that in the evening, but let me guarantee you that our faculty is keeping it hot here at Ames. Let's get started with some of this heat, okay? All right, so let's start off with our professor. Is it, can anyone hear me okay? It seems a little muffled. Is my too close to it? How's, is this better? Okay, yeah. professor of natural sciences, Dr. Carol Brown. Professor of Nurse Aid and Medical Preparation, Carrie Noble, and Professor of Economics, Monita Roy, actively participated in AFIT, which is the Alliance for Innovations and Transformations Institute. These participants learned about actions and ideas that turn a good workplace into a great one. Additionally, they learned to build a happy and thriving workplace based on shared purpose, care, connection, and trust. Obviously, this team is all in for Ames. Next, Professor of Natural Sciences, Dr. Carol Brown, and Professor of Psychology, Francie Rotoni, in the fall of 2021, formed a Monday Mentors Program to support and further the work of all of the mentoring endeavors on campus, including the new faculty mentoring and online faculty mentoring. And I myself have been a part of this online faculty mentoring, and I can tell you that it is quite a successful program and catapulted me professionally in many different ways. Additionally, Professor of Psychology, Solani Flores, was our keynote speaker for the Ames Convocation Day last Friday, September 9th, where she shared her story and we appreciated her vulnerability and courage that day. Professor, professor of Computer Information Services, Jennifer Bailey, tech edited the update to the popular video course, Build Your First Android App, and she is hosting the Mountain Region for Google Developer Group. 
All right. Now, that's just a few things I shared about Jennifer because she really has a lot in the report. <laughs> Go, Jennifer. And adjunct professor of early childhood education, Christine Weideman, instructor of early childhood education, Linda Carlson, and professor of early childhood education, Laura Willen King, created the first early childhood open house. I thought that was so wonderful. We all know how important it is to have a strong education early on to build that path for the future. Now, let's move on to the last part, and that's the awards. Adjunct Instructor of Humanities Douglas Gratton is the recipient of the Student Selected Faculty of the Year Award in the part-time category, Spring 2022. Now, yes, yes, let's do, let's give an applause for Doug. Love that. Now, although the students had many positive things to say about Doug, the one I chose that I wanted to share was that because of Doug, I feel more connected with myself and more loving of myself as well. Professor of Agriculture Amy McFarland is the recipient of the Student Selected Faculty of the Year Award for the full-time category Spring 2022. Once again, so many positive things students said about Amy. I want to include that Amy is a wonderful instructor who makes sure that you have the knowledge that you need to be successful in class. Well done, excellent faculty so far. Yes, yes, yes. Again, proving that we are indeed all in for AIDS. Moreover, adjunct instructor of nurse aid and medical prep, Jacqueline McGuire, is the recipient of the Dean Selected Faculty of the Year Award, Spring 2022, in the part-time category. Jacqueline was able to help our students achieve educational goals during the COVID pandemic, and we all know how important that was. Right during that time, it was such a challenge for us. So hats off to Jacqueline. Fine, yes, thank you all. All right, finally, Professor of Economics Momita Roy was the recipient of the Dean Selected Faculty of the Year Award in the full-time category, Spring 2022. Once again, so many positive and empowering statements for Momita, but I'm gonna share what Department Chair Clint Heiner had to say. Her contributions and commitment to teaching, student learning, professional development, and service are exemplary. In my 18 years at Ames Community College, I have never worked with a more dedicated individual. Let's give it up for Monique. Everybody. All right, everyone, thus wraps up my report for the AFA accomplishments for September. Any questions? All right, thank you all so much. I really appreciate the opportunity and time to be able to do this. This is quite a privilege and I appreciate it so much and I hope you all enjoy the rest of the meeting. Thank you for listening. Well, thank you, Julia, what a great report. You just need to work on your enthusiasm a little bit. <laughs> okay, next is the Ames Staff Association, Ross Perkins. Who do I need to talk to about not following those two? <laughs> Man, Danielle and Julia. Yeah, Jerry, you and I need to talk after this, so... It is such an honor to be here today again, representing the AIM Staff Association. My podium is moving. <laughs> Good afternoon, Board of Trustees, Dr. Borenstein, and AIM's community family. It's exciting to be here today. This is my first time here at the Flight Center, and wow. Um, I'm hoping to get a tour afterwards. Eric, thank you very much. Okay. Um, and, <laughs> ASA uh, will be holding its first meeting uh, for this year uh, next week, and we are excited about all the incredible things that we have planned this year. Uh, I will have an update at the next meeting on kind of our calendar of events so that if you want to join, uh, you'll be able to join, okay? Um, our unofficial theme for this year is get involved, um, just to try to get more staff involved in the incredible activities that AIMS offers, but also what ASA offers and stuff like that. So we're going to be reaching out. Uh, and really just connecting with our staff members and stuff like that. So we're super excited about that. 
Uh, as you saw in your uh, board packet there, you have your ripples of recognition. And there's a few of those that I would just like to highlight uh, this month because I feel like a lot of times the staff, you know, there's people that do their jobs and they're absolutely incredible at it. And they just, they get the recognition one-on-one, -on -one, but I want to just make it very public uh, for a few folks today. Uh, so the first group, two people are uh, Jamie Donnelly and Julia uh, Chokot. Uh, they're in the accounting department or accounting technicians. And here's what some of the highlights from their uh, nominators said. And I'm just going to read these directly. Uh, they are so friendly and patient with me and always make me feel so comfortable with any communications I have with them. Another nominator wrote this. They were extremely patient with me. There's a theme there. And never once made me feel silly for asking what I'm sure were some basic questions. They even invited me to contact them as often as necessary. In quotation marks, or in quotation marks here, or parentheses marks. They might regret extending that invitation to me. Ha ha. Their assistance left me feeling extremely grateful. Another staff member I would like to highlight today is Rob Sanchez. Now, if you've ever had any boxes delivered to you, you know Rob and you know the work that he does. So uh, this is a special recognition from the Ames Reed team uh, to Rob for his patience during the time that he was delivering over 400 books. And so this is what they uh, pulled out one of the quotes here. Rob was patient and accommodating as we redirected several boxes to ECA, uh, where people were eager to crack open the new textbooks and start reading. And so a lot of our students at ECA are reading those textbooks, which is awesome. Uh, that's really all I have today. Um, thank you for everyone who submitted a ripple. Uh, and I look forward to uh, incredible talking about the incredible staff here at Ames. Are there any questions? All right. Well, thank you, Board of Trustees, Dr. Bornstein and Ames Community, um, allowing me a few minutes to talk. And I will see you next month. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ross. Great presentation. Okay, um, next on the agenda is action items. First action item, item A, new energy certificate. Dr. Russ Rothamer. Russ is the Executive Vice President and Chief, Chief Academic Officer. Thank you, Chair Oxiger, members of the board. Dr. Bornstein, I bring to you th um, three action items for new certificates that you heard last month on the work session from our department chair, Amy McFarland. And I would just like to um, highlight the summary of each of those and then provide the recommendation. So um, action item 7A is the addition of an energy certificate within industrial technology. Um, certificates within this area and at AIMS are being revised to better meet industry needs and our recommendations from our advisory committee. And as each of these certificates, um, you'll hear, the, um, they matriculate both from the high school programs as well as our um, needs for current students and um, current industry needs. So our administrative recommendation is for the approval of the creation of the energy certificate within industrial technology. Okay, thank you, Russ. Uh, are there any questions of Russ at this time? Seeing none, I'll ask for a motion. I would move for approval of action item number seven, the addition of the energy certificate and industrial technology. I second the motion. We have a motion and a second on the new energy certificate. Any further questions? Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 That motion carries. Thank you, Russ. Next, item B, a new manufacturing operations certificate. Again, Dr. Russ Rothelmer. Uh, thank you, Chair Oxiger. Um, same story as before. Thank you, uh, Department Chair uh, Amy McFarland. Uh, this is for the creation of a manufacturing operations certificate, again, within industrial technology. 
um, and will matriculate for our high school students as well as um, currently or meet current in, um, industry needs. And the certificate is um, 22 credits. And our administrative recommendation is the approval of the addition of a manufacturing operations certificate within industrial technology. Okay, thank you, Russ. Are there any questions of Russ? Seeing none, um, I'll entertain a motion. I move that I move that we approve action item number seven B. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second the motion. We have a motion and a second to approve action item B for a new manufacturing operations certificate. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same aye. Same. Motion carries. Congratulations. Item C, a new robotics certificate. Again, Dr. Rothamer. Thank you, Chair Oxiger. Uh, we bring um, forward to you today the Certificate in Industrial Technology of a new robotics certificate, which is made up of 17 uh, credits over six different courses. And again, we'll matriculate with our high school programs and meet current industry needs. And our administrative recommendation um, request is for the approval of the creation of the robotics certificate within industrial technology. Thank you, Russ. Any questions? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion. I'd move to approve the robotics certificate program. Uh, second. We have a motion and a second to approve the new robotics certificate. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. <laughs> Item D, a new Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree, Dr. Rothman. Thank you, Chair Oxiger. So moving from our Business and Technology Division to our Allied Health Division, last month during the work session, you heard from Dean Terry Anderson, as well as our Director of Nursing, Dr. Katrina Einhelig, on the benefit and the necessity, quite honestly, for Northern Colorado for the creation of a Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree. And as um, was shared with you last month, this degree is currently the preferred educational entry degree into practice for nursing um, graduates in the majority of the hospitals in Colorado, as well as um, throughout the nation. And with this, um, Proposal for a Bachelor of Science of Nursing degree aims will be meeting the needs not only of our students, but those industry that we serve, as well as the community um, that we're currently in, in terms of the healthcare crisis and looking for that opportunity to sustain um, Northern Colorado. Our administrative recommendation is requesting to the board to approve the creation of a Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree. Okay, are there any questions of us? Okay, seeing none, do we have a motion for a new Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree? I would enthusiastically make a motion to approve action item 7B uh, for a new Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree program at Ames. We have a motion, do we have a second? We have a second. I'll second Imagine that. Imagine that from two healthcare professionals. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second for a new Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. That motion carries. Congratulations. Exciting stuff. Next on the agenda is a board resolution for claiming voter registration day. Aaron Presswich, interim vice president for student engagement, inclusion, and success. Good afternoon, uh, Chair Oxinger and uh, President Bornstein and members of the board. 
I'm pleased to uh, propose that we declare the fourth Tuesday of every September as uh, um, voter registration day at Ames. This is the same day that um, the, the, the nation celebrates voter registration day. Just a couple of quick related highlights. This actually stems from um, a, a, some advocacy work from our civic learning and democratic engagement committee. So this is a somewhat new uh, grassroots committee that's comprised of uh, some faculty, staff, students, and even a couple of community members um, have advocated that uh, we take this action. And uh, also on a related note, um, our CAP members are bringing um, uh, Carly Copps, who's the Weld County Clerk and Recorder. She is presenting at Ames on uh, Ames Voter Registration Day, September 20th. Um, and so this is a couple good examples of democratic engagement in action on campus. Any questions? Any questions there? Well, if there are no questions, um, I would entertain a motion uh, for a board resolution proclaiming voter registration day. Dr. B, you have that available. Would you read that, please? Do you mind if I read the? Oh, sure. Okay, sure. Uh, resolution proclaiming the fourth Tuesday of September as voter registration day. So this is what you would be acting on is to, to sign this. Okay. Whereas Ames Community College, Ames is committed to the highest standards of election integrity and also to encouraging broad voter registration access and citizen participation in elections among vote eligible citizens. And whereas Ames recognizes that many Americans are not able to vote because they miss a registration deadline, do not update their registration information, or are unfamiliar with how to register. And whereas Ames recognizes the need for diverse partners such as nonprofits, libraries, businesses, colleges and universities, and more to work in the communities they serve to register citizens to vote. And whereas the need for reliable and trusted public information and education on voter registration is critical to Americans' active participation in elections and the integrity of electoral processes. And whereas National Voter Registration Day is an annual nonpartisan celebration of democracy that takes place on the fourth Tuesday of September and seeks to create broad awareness of voter registration opportunities and reach tens of thousands of voters who may not otherwise register. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Ames Community College District proclaims the fourth Tuesday of September each year as Voter Registration Day at Ames and commits to support voter registration efforts and citizen participation in elections. If you approve, approved and adopted this 14th day of September, 2022, Board of Trustees, Ames Community College District. Thank you, Dr. B. So I would entertain a motion to approve. I move that we um, approve the action item number 7E, the, um, the board resolution proclaiming voter registration day. Thank you, do we have a second? I second that motion. We have a second to that motion. Any further discussion? I would just like to say I wholeheartedly support this. I think it's important that we get our students uh, engaged in the uh, in the um, uh, voter process in, in the country. And I think it's a great uh, exercise in civic education. So I wholeheartedly support this. Any further discussion? Okay, well, then I would uh, ask the question, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aaron. Okay, next on the agenda is information items, uh, the event calendar and upcoming work session agenda items. Jerry, we got some information on Thank you, Chair Oxiger. 
I wanted to take a couple minutes just to go through um, kind of a look ahead for the October board meeting. Um, as you can see in your packet, uh, October board meeting will be in Windsor at the Windsor campus. Um, will there be a couple of work session items uh, scheduled there? So process timeline for the new strategic plan and uh, code of conduct uh, ethics procedure. Uh, so currently uh, attorney Jennifer Neal um, is working on a, a draft of that and she'll be present at that meeting to, to walk through that draft uh, with the full board. Uh, and then you'll see uh, down below that a few other items that are scheduled for that meeting as well in the president's report, uh, institutional research and core measures report, uh, academic program feasibility review and viability and academic master plan. And of course, in October, uh, this goes into the, um, the events list. Uh, you'll see listed here as well, the ACCT annual conference in New York. Um, so of course, most of us will be attending that. Um, and then there'll be a, a check-in on uh, progress of the board priorities that were approved after the summer, um, the summer retreat. And moving to the next part, um, upcoming events. Uh, you'll see there are quite a few listed there, and I just wanted to highlight a few of them. Um, a number of them have already been highlighted by a couple of the previous speakers, um, so we'll um, highlight a couple of others. Uh, on September the 24th, the Great Aardvark Embark uh, Balloon Launch will be at the Greeley Campus, uh, 6.30 a.m. to 8 a.m. Uh, currently, uh, Trustee Hout uh, is, is the trustee that has gotten back to me so far, um, saying that he'll be attending, so if you'd like to attend that, uh, certainly shoot me an email and we'll get you on the list. Um, next is um, a little bit later on this semester, December 9th, you'll see commencement is listed there. This is Ames uh, first winter commencement. And so we want you to be sure that all of you block that date off on your calendars now. Um, so that's December 9th, block the whole day. Um, the, the timing right now of the ceremony um, hasn't been finalized yet, at least I don't think, but um, it just block the whole day and we'll be back um, with more information on that as we get it. Um, the next item, uh, looking ahead again to January of 2023, um, will be the retreat. Uh, we're already into 2023. Um, there's not a fixed date yet, um, but we'll be bringing the 2023 board meeting and retreat calendar to the board a little bit earlier than we have in the past. Typically, we bring that to the December meeting, um, but this year we're going to try to bring it uh, probably into the November meeting so we all have more time to plan um, and plan ahead for those future meetings. And I'll be in touch about availability dates for that January retreat coming up soon, too. And, uh, the last date that I wanted to highlight is Conversation Day, um, February 17th, 2023. Uh, we would love for the board to be um, present uh, during the morning portion of Conversation Day. Uh, so please be sure to block that full day as well. And of course, as we get closer to that event, um, we'll be providing more detailed information on that as well. But we do ask that you, you block that day. And that concludes uh, the item for me. But any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions, if you're Okay. Thank you. I'd just like to uh, emphasize those uh, days when uh, we need to block the day out for things like graduation and uh, and conversation day that we we go ahead and do that so we don't uh, would really like to have the entire board there if possible okay well thank you jerry i appreciate it next is the ceo and president's report dr leah bornstein thank you chair members of the board um, i do want to just reiterate some of the men, uh, dates that jerry mentioned and next month's one of next month's work sessions uh, uh, believe it or not, even though you did give the nod for a celebration and planning year for our strategic plan, when we look at the inclusive process and the steps, when we move backwards from July 1st of 2024, it brings us to January 23. And the first step is with the board. So in October, one of the um, work sessions will be, I have the steps and the timeline and we'll go over that. So that's also why the January retreat will be important because in the January retreat, really um, that's the time we will spend or you will spend as a board talking about our purpose, our mission, vision, and our values. Um, and that's what kicks off the rest of us, which is also why conversation day in February is going to be extremely important for you all to be there as well, as well as the rest of the college, because that will be our institutional kickoff for our strategic plan. Now, for folks who are in the audience going, wait a minute, thought we had a year. We do, uh, don't panic. 
uh, it's, it's a, it's a long, it's a year and a half process so that we're not stressed out so that we have a lot of opportunity to vision and discuss and call and vet and vision again. So I just want you not to panic. Um, uh, but, but we, we, we begin. So that's why those dates are, are important. A couple of um, show and tell items, uh, buy, your, buy your seats. Um, this thing that I'm using as a fan is our uh, year end report, our report out to the community. Fabulous job by our design, our graphic design team in Marcom. We have lots and lots of hard copies. If you wanna hand them out to anybody in your communities, it's also on our website. Um, so just let Jerry and I know if you want hard copies, uh, we'll pass, pass those out. Also at your locations, you might remember last year, um, Ray Chard, who is our director of our high school programs, uh, created along with his team, an incredible document um, regarding concurrent enrollment at all the high schools that we serve. Uh, and you, you will, re I'm hoping you remember that it's, yeah, okay, it's good, you do, I'm not, okay. uh, so <laughs> this is the most recent version, so this is last year, so it's the updated information, and Ray is actually going to also uh, various board meetings presenting this data uh, so that the school boards, et cetera, know uh, what they've been operating under, so that's fantastic. Also, Chuck Jensen, uh, put by your places the hot off the press, Operating budget for 22-23. So that's your copy. We have a couple extra copies, Chuck, but not too, too many. Yeah, a couple. If anybody wants uh, another one for, you know, by your bedside, there you go. <laughs> um, and finally, I would like to ask uh, Eric Kimler, who is our um, director for our aviation program, to step to the podium for uh, a minute to update us on uh, the ARPA grant that you will recall, we talked about a little bit in May, and I'm not going to say any more because he's going to say the rest. Eric, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bornstein. Uh, thank you, everybody. Welcome to the Ames Flight Training Center. I'm Eric Kimler, the Director of Aviation here at Ames, um, and thanks for allowing the Flight Center here to host the events today. Uh, I always look forward to September and being able to do this and thanks for putting up with the, uh, the heat and the warmth. Mike tried to turn up the fan a bit. Hopefully it provides a little bit of reprieve, but we appreciate everyone being here today. Uh, so I'll ap apologize for the casual attire. I didn't know I was gonna talk today, but I enjoy the opportunity to do so. Uh, and I appreciate Dr. Bornstein, Aaron and Susan Moreland, Dr. Moreland in representing women in aviation by wearing your shirts. So thanks for that. Uh, so I'm here gladly to briefly discuss the status of the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, or ARPA, as you know it, as it relates to the Technology and Transportation Innovation Hub at Northern Colorado Regional Airport. As you may remember, we provided a brief way back in, on May 11th, 2022, prior to summer break, uh, your summer break, that provided an overview of this great opportunity for state funds. So here's a brief recap, since that was a while ago. The Technology and Transportation Innovation Hub involves supplementary funding for the airport terminal, totaling 15 million, that's their ask, and the airport has already 17 million dedicated to that terminal construction. It also includes, more, important, more importantly, or most importantly for us, an educational space that would house an AMS-operated aircraft maintenance technician school, referred to as an AMTS, totaling 24 million, of which Ames would be required to provide a 25% match to those funds. That equates to $6 million for a total of 30 million dedicated towards a facility and equipment for this new aviation program. As you may remember as well, the Aviation Maintenance Program has been part of the Aviation Department's five-year strategic plan. Larimer County, has earmarked and approved 1 .5, a $1.5 million sub-award towards this specific proposal. This would be split between the terminal and educational space, which again is combined to be one proposal, one project. That split is, would be a direct ratio of the ARPA fund request, which means the educational space would get right around $930,000 
and a terminal would get $570,000 of additional funding. This money would only be allocated if we were to receive the ARPA grant. So where are we with the timeline? That's the big question too, right? So right now, we are told that in the first quarter of calendar year 2023, the grant submission process will begin. No other, no other dates really have shifted other than obviously the awarding process of, of them advising who receives the funds. That also would slide to the right as well, but we don't know when that would be. So once the ARPA awards are announced, the money must be obligated by 2024 and fully spent by 2026. So again, right, the timeline slides to the right as far as the process, but nothing else slides. So it just truncates the whole process. As previously discussed, once the grant submitted, that will obligate AIMS for up to $6 million should we receive the award. I say up to 6 million because the land may be used as part of that 25% match, as well as the Larimer County sub award, which may, can be used towards that as well. So it may actually be less than 6 million if we're the recipients of the ARPA award. A few other updates I'd like to provide. We have been meeting with Larimer County and city representatives on an intermittent basis since May. And all other potential ARPA, other potential ARPA recipients have also been meeting with Larimer County. And those are just really to provide us with updates as they come in, which have been few and far between. And then them really asking us where we are with our planning. Additionally, we have received a letter of support from Frontier Airlines as it relates to a potential aviation maintenance school. Here's a small excerpt that I'd like to read to you. Frontier Airlines is poised to double its fleet size within the next five years. Our continued service to customers within the state of Colorado will demand a need for homegrown maintenance technicians to support our operation, especially at our DIA hub and headquarters location. An AMTS in Northern Colorado would expand the candidate pool of licensed mechanics in our state, which will assist Frontier Airlines with its staffing needs as we continue to grow. The facts above, which are stated in that letter, the facts above affirm the need for aircraft technicians to be educated, certificated, and to become a part of the aviation industry's workforce in our great state of Colorado. We look forward to future correspondence regarding the approval and potential development of your AMT program. That came from Frontier. Uh, we are in the process of acquiring similar letters of support from United Airlines and SkyWest Airlines. SkyWest is the largest regional in the country and it has a base of operations here in Denver as well as high school partners. So those are in process. I'd like to also do a quick shout out to Mike Millsaps and his team. And not only for obviously where we sit today, um, but the Windsor Academic Facility and uh, his team's also working on an artistic rendering for us to use in future uh, briefs, not only to the city, but to, to everyone here as well uh, for what an a &P facility would look like. And so I appreciate the responsiveness and work, Mike, you and your team have, have done for, certainly for the aviation department and for Ames as a whole. So what are the next steps? Uh, as Dr. Bornstein says, what are they? Next month, the hope is that we can provide a deeper dive brief on what a proposed Ames Aircraft Maintenance Program would look like that would allow the board to further discuss and potentially vote on obligating Ames funds, totaling up to 6 million for this educational opportunity. Lastly, an internal feasibility study was conducted by our department. This was followed by a peer review, which largely validated the internal study. I'd like to share a brief excerpt from that to close. Through Ames internal feasibility study and this report, one area is very clear, which is the need to develop more aviation means technicians. This is critical for the aviation and aerospace industry in the United States, but more specifically in the state of Colorado. Uh, and with that, I'll certainly open up to questions if there are any. Questions. So we, we really just wanted to kind of um, remind you all, since it's been a while from that conversation in May, as Eric mentioned, the hope is to um, have a, a work session in October, so next month, to talk uh, more about this and then for board action in November so that really before the grant comes out, Ames is either committed or not committed to moving forward and, and our folks know. And really the vote that would be taken in November would be 
the committing of uh, what's the exact language up to six million dollars for this project if we receive the grant. That's correct. So that's the those are the um, next steps and why we wanted just to remind you of, of this. Could I just ask clarification on the time frame? I think previously we thought the grant request might come out in September, October. Um, so when's the end point? Because that's quite a few months of decompression, of compression. It is. It has compressed it quite a bit. Um, so we don't know. Um, right now, they said the first quarter. So we, we believe that by end of March, all of the submissions must be in for the grant. And then the awarding process, we estimate to be very quickly following that. So um, we estimate it will be after the first quarter. So we're assuming second quarter, early second quarter, we would have, we would know uh, who's going to be receiving those funds. Um, there's a standing, right? The standing joke is, you know, it keeps sliding to the right, but nothing else is. And, and that's likely going to stay that way. And so, um, you know, shovel ready projects are, are important to them um, while the terminal is shovel ready we might less so be. And, and so I certainly haven't talked to Mike and his team on, on how that looks as far as a build goes, but, but looking at it and looking this on the history side of what FNO does here. Um, I know they've pre pandemic at least have built, uh, have done one year builds um, once the, once the architects get in there. So I do believe it's still a, an, an actionable and achievable, uh, construction piece, because that's really the, the long pull in the tent, I believe, here. Uh, but again, I haven't talked specifically with Mike about those. But, but yeah, so 2026 is when that money would have to be spent. And so that timeline, according to the county, uh, they do not believe that is shifting at all. Thank you. Hello? For on it. I, I think it really will be um, kind of that timing piece of what needs to happen. And I agree. I have a lot of confidence as well. Thank you. <laughs> and just I, you know, I didn't see I didn't see Mike twitching over there, but um, we'll we'll make sure we also have an impression. Maybe we can have an impression next month for work session on some initial thoughts on what that would look like. And um, Trustee Lindell. No, I'm just thinking. It sounds like it's the information's coming at a good time. I'm thinking for Chuck, because Chuck is doing his review of his budget and everything for just next year, even though it's. Oh. A year and a half, two years down the road. It's um, perfect timing for you, Chuck. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Any other thoughts at this point? We'll do we'll go deep on next month. We got a question from Mark. Mark Howell. Yes. Can everybody hear me? <laughs> um, Hi, Mark. You know, Hi there. How are you doing? Mm -hmm. uh, from Prairie. Uh, long to short, Eric, is our investment. Uh, inclusive with the six million, or we would we need to add add on if we did do a build out? I didn't hear the question. Could you repeat it if you heard? Yeah, it? could you repeat that? Um, well, we need to add on to the six million for a build out. I guess that's my query. I'm not sure I fully understand. So the question is, do we have to add on to the six million if there's a build out? What I understand, and I'll and see if this answers your question, uh, Trustee Hout. Uh, the twenty-four million is the request from the ARPA grant itself. Um, the requirement for Ames and any other project, frankly, is a twenty-five percent match, which would be an up to six million dollars, um, depending on what other things we can throw in there. If we get more, if we get the Larimer County sub grant, which right now. They've guaranteed, they basically have earmarked and approved that for us. Uh, that can be taken off that six million, most likely. We haven't asked that direct question yet, but uh, that is what we expect. And so the up to six million is a total build out for this facility to include equipment of a $30 million facility and equipment ask. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does, it does in part. Would it be on our ground or would it be on NOCO ground? It would be on Northern, it would be, uh, so it's the Technology and Trans Transportation Innovation Hub at Northern Colorado Regional Airport. So it would be um, at the, on the airport. Okay. 
on their ground, right? That is correct. Yes, sir. Okay, good. No, that's that's good. Sounds great. We'll get more information. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Eric. We look forward to hearing more next month. Okay. Thank you all for the opportunity. Okay, now, sorry, back to the agenda. <laughs> so um, I'd like to ask Dr. Russ Rothmer, EVP and Chief Academic Officer, to come on up and uh, give us our annual assessment report, please. Thank you, Dr. Bornstein, members of the board. It's my pleasure to reintroduce you to two members of our academic team. Uh, Jeff Adcock is our Executive Director of Institutional Research and Assessment, and he'll talk a little bit about how we got to where we are for the curricular assessment report that's in your packet. Dr. DeCosmo is our Assistant Vice President of Academic Affairs, and she is going to share where we're going from here. So I'd like to turn it over to Jeff and Dr. DeCosmo. Good afternoon, board, and uh, Dr. B, and Chair Huxtinger. Um, so this is a little bit of a different, or departure from what we've done on our assessment in the, in the past ones, uh, mostly because we've had a, a gap in some of the learning outcomes assessments. So I just wanted to kind of give a, uh, a timeline of the things that are going on and the things that have done and what we're doing to try to get it back on track for the 22-23 academic year. Um, 2019-20 marked the end of the five-year assessment plan. And with that, we had planned on in 2020-2021 to be a, a planned transition year. And because of COVID, it seriously disrupted our plans and the things that we were trying to accomplish. However, um, during that year, we did implement uh, what's called the AIMS Assess Assessment Central, uh, which includes, it's an internal site for faculty and staff. To, to do assessment guidebook. Uh, it also includes assessment plans, the teams and committees, and also uh, additional professional development for faculty on assessment. Uh, another thing that we did was professional development and assessment training um, by doing a program assessment series of nine sessions with uh, faculty and a program curriculum mapping workshop along with a chair training assessment workshop. Uh, another thing that was started in 2020, I think it was early 2021, maybe it was 20, late 2020, but the general education program assessment uh, was reimagined. It ended up being about a two-year process to come across and reassess how we're go going about and doing general education assessment across the institution. That was completed in early 2022. 2021 and 2022 was an unanticipated uh, extended transition year. Um, and again, we acknowledge the gap in the learning outcomes. However, in the process of doing this, we also, uh, in conjunction with uh, the FTLC, the Faculty Teaching and Learning Center, and our, our Department uh, Institutional Research and Assessment, also did a summer norming institute with which to tell, try to help improve the techniques of assessment uh, for our faculty. We also worked with deans, chairs, and directors to jumpstart the assessment efforts for 2022-2023 academic year for both CTE and general education assessments. Um, for 2022 and beyond, I'll turn it over to Andrea. Thank you. Um, as the, the update in your board packet indicates, there, there are several sections in the assessment report with blue headers. Um, I'll be speaking about the last section that just discusses what the plans are moving forward. There are a couple of things in that section I would just like to highlight. The first one is um, moving assessment to uh, academic affairs assessment, I should say, um, to the Assistant Vice President of Academic Affairs Office, which is my office. I'd like to provide a little bit of rationale um, behind that decision. Um, when we talk about assessment, there are a lot of different uh, components to assessment. Um, first of all, faculty need to um, map our five student learning outcomes to their curriculum. Um, they need to choose an assessment method. Uh, they need to collect student work. Um, we sometimes refer to student work as artifacts. And an artifact might include 
a test question. It might include a paper that, that students wrote. It might include um, videos of speeches that were given. Um, so collecting that student work as a part of assessment and then scoring the, the artifacts according to an assessment rubric. Um, then results need to be analyzed. And then that last step, which is often referred to as closing the assessment loop, involves taking the results that were found and thinking about what can we do next? What can we do to make improvements? Um, what can we do to make any changes to curriculum or to pedagogy? And, and the goal really is to understand how our students are doing. Um, how well are they learning what they need to learn in order to be successful at AIMS and after AIMS? Um, and once we understand how our students are doing, we can make these improvements. And because so much of that work that I just described in that assessment cycle, so much of that work is done at the faculty level, it makes sense to move academic assessment to the Assistant Vice President of Academic Affairs Office with continued support um, from Jeff and his team as well. Um, there's another bullet point I'd like to highlight, and that's the third bullet point in that last section of the assessment report. Um, and the, the bullet point talks about creating a schedule for assessing our uh, common learning outcomes. We have five common learning outcomes. Really the goal is to just make sure that our programs are each assessing a variety of those five learning outcomes over time. And then secondly, to make sure that as a college, holistically, we are looking at all five of those learning outcomes within say a year. And I think a lot of great work is already happening um, in those areas. We just need a little bit more organization and structure and documentation and planning. So those are some of the things that we're planning moving forward. Um, just want to welcome any questions that you might have at this time. What are the five um, assessments that you're looking at? Mm -hmm. So the five current learning outcomes are written communication, oral communication, problem solving, critical thinking, and professionalism. And also in the report, there's just a um, statement that there is a proposal to combine written communication and oral communication into one, and then add another learning outcome that would be diverse perspectives and global learning. Um, so we just need to, I think, pick that ball back up and keep running with it and, and decide if that's a move that we want to make or not. But the, the five original ones that I listed are the current five. Any other questions? Again, this is a, an annual monitoring report um, for the board so that you know that we are assessing our, not only our curriculum and our academic programs, um, but then also our services as well. Thank you both Thank very you. much. Uh, the next um, monitoring report is from uh, Aaron Prestwich, our Interim Vice President for Student Engagement, Inclusion and Success on our enrollment. All right, thank you. So um, I handed out a little bit ago our enrollment numbers that are fresh as of yesterday. And um, to help bring to our perspective why these numbers are important, I wanted, I wanted to share something. So many institutions are really aware of their enrollment numbers because it impacts their financial situation so significantly. And of course, we're in a different situation as many other community colleges as our as our, um, our financial resources aren't as reliant on tuition as most public institutions. Um, however, I think it's, it's still very important for us to really be keenly aware of our enrollment numbers because um, of the mission that we serve. Uh, our community colleges, really, when we look back historically in the 50s and the 60s, there was a boom in, in, in community college development across the country. And really the purpose was to increase access to higher education to more students. And so I just wanted to remind us of that as to why it's so important for us to, to consistently review our enrollment numbers so that we can really meet our 
uh, mission of providing access uh, and increasing access. So I'm not going to go through all of these numbers, uh, but I want to provide a few highlights. So one is when you look at our overall headcount and FTE, uh, compared to the same time last year, we are up. Uh, not a lot, but we are up. So, um, so we are up nearly 1% in headcount and nearly 1% in FTE. So this is uh, much better than being down, <laughs> for sure. COVID threw us a huge curveball uh, in terms of enrollment. Um, the, the, the enrollment numbers, it also has thrown us a huge cur curveball in terms of enrollment predictions. We used to be able to kind of track and predict the ebb and flow of our enrollment numbers based on national trends and based on the economy. And, and um, but COVID has become unpredictable in, in terms of its impact on, on our enrollment numbers. And so the fact that we are up compared to the same time last year is a really good thing. Another thing that I wanted to note, and this number is not on here, but when you look at our enrollment numbers from the same time three years ago, so fall of 2019, which was pre-COVID, we're actually up almost 2% in headcount. So we're, 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 we're actually up to where we were in headcount. And we're so close to FTE. We're down like 0.39%. Uh, as far as where we were a few years ago. So we're really close. We're, we're, we've increased our headcount just a bit and we're almost back. We've almost recouped in FTE. Uh, and in fact, we still have a few concurrent enrollment uh, registrations coming in from the high schools. And so I think we are going to get back to where we were three years ago, which is a huge accomplishment. Another other, a couple of other um, kind of caveats to, to highlight is if you look on the, if you look on the back page, no, sorry, if you keep uh, on, the, on the front page, the first time at Ames number. So this is our, our recruiters, our folks that are out recruiting new students. These are typically traditional age students, but not always, but, but typically these are traditional age students that are coming to us. Um, these, these have become harder students to recruit. And as you can see, our first time at Ames population this fall compared to last fall is actually up 12%, which is a huge deal. So that really is a testament to all the work that our recruiters have done, our enrollment coaches have done, all of our departments that are involved in and have work to do in enrollment. They have all been working so diligently. One of the things that we've been doing actually in the past year or two is proactively reaching out to all students to apply uh, personally um, to try to, you know, to, to try to uh, complete the matriculation process and get them to come and enroll. Um, and so that's a really huge deal. The other thing that I wanted to note is the previous concurrent enrollment students also grew. So if you look at that, um, the bottom, um, uh, at the bottom of the page, the previous concurrent enrollment students. So, Last fall, we had 249 students that can, these are basically concurrent enrollment students that, that became full-time, well, not full-time, that became degree-seeking students at Ames, like full Ames students. So last fall, we had 249 of those. And this fall, we had 328, which is an increase in 34% of those students. So what that shows is that more of those concurrent enrollment students are starting to become actually degree-seeking students at Ames, which is a really exciting development. Um, when you look on the back, uh, our fallen numbers were strong. These aren't related to enrollment numbers, but I think it indicates like the level of engagement of our students. They are, they are starting to re-engage uh, back on campus. And so our fallen enrollment numbers are really strong. We've seen it physically. Um, at our activities and also in the student commons. If you have not visited the student commons lately, it is so exciting. It is so exciting to see students in there, in the learning commons, uh, in the study areas, utilizing the game room, utilizing the bistro, hanging out with each other. The student commons has been very active this fall, which is really, really cool um, and exciting to see. And then also we continue to be a very diverse uh, student population. 
Um, and that is continuing to, to, to slowly grow, which is uh, also, I think, a, a good development. Any questions about any of the enrollment numbers? I just, I'm gonna, it doesn't look like there are questions, but I wanna jump in with a little context. Uh, yesterday, we had our monthly uh, statewide CEO meeting where we informally shared uh, enrollment data. Ames is the only institution in the state that is up. There's one other institution that's stable and the Air Force Academy who has a different model than we do has a full class. So they're now considering themselves stable or they're really not up or down. They're, they're, they're full like they would like to be. Um, but as far as being up, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. In this, it's in this case, deal. 1% is a big deal. 1% is a huge deal. Yep. So please, please, please congratulate our recruiters, our program directors, our faculty, everybody who's been involved in recruiting and getting folks here. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Marilyn has a... Yeah. I also have one too, but go ahead, Marilyn. Thanks, Mark. Just a comment, I, I was going to make a comment that um, it's great to see that we're growing, um, albeit in the smaller numbers, but I also think um, the team does a fabulous job, and I think about the recruitment and that, but I also have to give a shout out to the entire college because the reputation and what's out there of what people are seeking are matching, and so um, I think it's a testament to the entire college. Thank you. Trustee Help. Um, yes, I would. I hear you, but we'll give it a try. Can you hear me okay? <laughs> Sound like we I'm can. on an old cell phone. Let's try. <laughs> Long to short. I, I just want to congratulate the staff and uh, everybody in, in guidance and advisement. It's just those numbers are spectacular when we look at all the moraines that we've gone through with COVID. And just to have a, a snippet up regardless wherever it's at. I'm glad to see new full-time enrollees as well as the concurrent programs engaging as full-time and students. And I think everybody needs some added girls and added boys. And from the board, I, I'm very proud of you. Thank you, Trustee Hill. Trustee Wendell. Um, I'm similar. I'm so excited and proud of what Ames has done. And um, the fact that there's an increase in first time at Ames, to me, the first thing that comes to me is hope. Mm -hmm. And maybe this community college is the one that's going to give the state hope, you know, for increased enrollment and, and continuing it. So, you know, hats off to everyone for doing such a good job. <laughs> Chair Oxiger. Yeah, I just want to congratulate everyone on this. Uh, this really is a huge deal. You know, when we're out in the community and we're talking to people, uh, I'll speak for myself. I know I hear many, many ex-students uh, talking about Ames. And uh, I know uh, based on our conversations that they are out there, in essence, recruiting for us as well. Um, they're singing the praises of Ames. They're talking about what a great education they got and everything. So... Um, we want to thank those people, too, and anytime we talk to any of them, we want to encourage them um, to talk uh, about their experience and to talk to other people and, and future students. Uh, that really does make a huge difference, and they really do contribute a lot, uh, I think, to the reputation of Ames. Um, so um, I just wanted to throw that a little bit in and, again, congratulate everyone. I'll just briefly add to that comment. Uh, it's, it's great to see growth in uh, first time at Ames. Uh, and you know, that's at the student level. I think we're building enthusiasm and understanding. But what I hear in the community uh, comes from grandparents and parents and just relates to the credibility of our programs of quality. And uh, it's you know, that, that doesn't happen overnight. It's taken uh, quite a while to develop that uh, kind of credibility 
And I just say, keep up the good work. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. On that upbeat, wonderful note, Dr. Rothmer, I believe you have uh, to introduce some sabbatical reports. Uh, this is the way we keep committed and keep moving forward and keep momentum. Yes, thank you, Dr. Bornstein, members of the board. And to that point, Dr. Bornstein, I just want to also take this opportunity to thank the board as well as Dr. Bornstein for that continued support of our all of our academic programs and teams. So from the first four action items that you had in terms of the developing the new certificates as well then the approving us moving forward with the BSN, critical to the innovation and meeting community needs, as you said. So thank you for that support. And your continued support last year when you voted to support these four faculty members with their professional development, that not only helps those individual faculty members, but that absolutely has a direct impact on our students, as well as our overall college community and all of those that we serve. So with that, we have four reports for you from those faculty members that were able to do a sabbatical last um, year, either for a full year or a semester. And we'd like to start with the English and Humanities and Professor Costello, who will be joining us remotely. Hi, thanks for having me today. I work on the Ames OWL. It's a new modern online writing lab that's meant to be updated for the current generation, which is mostly mobile. Over the past couple of years, we've been curating it with resources. However, we needed to put forward a writing across the curriculum section um, in order to be in line with, with the strategic tactical plan. And so essentially when I turned in my sabbatical application, I created a list of pages I wanted to make. And as I turn in my sabbatical report, I have checked off <laughs> the list of things that I wanted to make. Um, essentially, I created a writing across the curriculum section. There's writing across or writing for economics courses, psychology, sociology, history, lab reports. I also went ahead and um, created formatting pages for Chicago because there are two different styles, author date and notes bibliography. And I went for a more um, inclusive design uh, just diverse imagery, examples and wording, um, some grammar dis disclaimers um, in order to validate people who speak different types of English. And I just want to thank um, a couple of professors who viewed and critiqued these pages because I am not an expert in teaching science. So thank you, Francie Rotini, Selene Flores, Mamita Roy, Clint Heiner, Michael Booker, and Emma Murray. Um, I do have the links available um, on the sabbatical report. I'm not sure if you have it in front of you, but the links are all there in that report. Do you have? Thank you, Shell. Any questions of Shell with regard to her sabbatical? No. Thank you, Shell. Thank you. Uh, next up is Professor Hatch. I see her over there um, representing our accounting and business area. The sabbatical notebook. <laughs> I'm not going to read it all to you today. Okay, you should have, I'm in your board materials, the entire presentation, and I'm not going to talk about all of that. I've shortened it because, of course, I was told I only had five minutes, and then it was three minutes, and so I'm a little nervous. So a couple of um, statistics that I thought would be very interesting for you to know before I get started. Um, there are now nine additional business partnerships. I have 23 business card contacts. I have met and saw in action six Ames accounting graduates. Um, I have approximately 100 pages of handwritten notes. I have various additional work sample copies that business provided for me to use in the accounting classroom. I have already presented at two different conferences for educators across the country. And one was in Savannah for accounting that I'm a part of, Tactic, and the other one was for CTLA, which was in California. So it was broad range and there were people from Australia and all over, so it was pretty interesting. And I'm still having email communications with all of these individuals. So just to kind of explain my sabbatical, next slide. Or am I supposed to get somewhere? I got, I'll, 
I'll click it for you. Thank you. Uh, my sabbatical was in the fall. I actually shadowed accounting functions. I went into business and I actually witnessed them doing their exciting accounting functions. And yes, accounting is exciting, even though many of you do not think so. <laughs> um, I witnessed and asked questions regarding general business operations, including hiring and the path to a current job in the accounting field. Um, there were diverse businesses that I went to see in construction to nonprofit to energy. Um, there was very business size that I visited um, prior Ames accounting attendees and or graduates. So that was very exciting to see them actually applying what we taught them. And I do want to give a shout out to Robert Half because Dave from Robert Half did help connect me with some of these industries and he's also on our advisory committee. So just kind of an overview, these were the skills. Can you just go ahead and click through all of them on this slide? Um, I'm going to give my business listing so you know we're going to be obviously in accounting due technology. There is definitely hard skills that they need to be aware of, soft skills, and then on top of that, some employability skills and some of the things I saw on the job and helpful hints. So that's in the full presentation. What I thought you would find interesting is the business partners, and I have three slides of them that indicate the businesses I went to. One of the ones that's local to Greeley, I went to Anderson and & Whitney, which is a CPA firm. I met with all of those people underneath Anderson and & Whitney. Any name you see that has an asterisk is a prior in student and or graduate. Then I also went to Doan Construction with all the construction in our field, or in our area. Um, it was very interesting to see all these people in construction accounting because you don't necessarily talk in class about construction accounting except for one chapter in intermediate. So, and then Centerline Energy, that was very interesting too, how we're doing energy in the state and beyond. Next, I did, um, I started with the prior student that works at CentOS, who has moved out of the accounting function and all accounting was centralized. So it was in another state. So we did a Zoom session. And then Landmark Homes is huge. This is the company that when I tell my students the cash is the most important, they do 100 bank reconciliations per month. It's a lot of money and a lot of things transferring back and forth. So it was great to what I'm telling students to be really happening out there. Nutrion, um, James Wallace, he was great because he shared with me the importance as to all of them of Excel. He, that is, does a lot of agriculture. So they track tons of inventory and seeds and that kind of thing. Thousands and thousands and thousands of rows and columns in Excel, pretty crazy. Then PDC, PDC, um, I did go to Denver and I witnessed um, my, our prior student, Spring Cloud, who graduated 10 years ago with her AAS degree. She started working for this company immediately. It's been bought out and moved and that kind of thing. She um, is a senior procurement administrator and is making six figures with her two-year Ames accounting degree plus benefits. So it was very exciting to see her. Steel Fabrications is in Fort Collins and they provide steel to many projects we see happening all over the place. So it's great to see how they run. And then I went, because we have quite a few students that ask about nonprofit and that is their passion. So I did spend some time at United Way as well. So then additionally, I just wanted to make sure that everyone knew I've met with all of these people and I shadowed, but then I also have lots of people come in and talk to our students. And we have partnerships with many of them. So I wanted to make sure you knew who they were. That's why they're included. Um, JBS, um, we have had Ames Community College finance area share with our students, so that's very exciting. Obviously, one of the major skills that you need to have in the accounting field is Excel. That was one of the first technology things that was shared. So we do have that as part of our curriculum, but we are going to look at how we revamp it because there's new things that are happening with data analytics and those kinds of things to make sure that our program is what it should be. Um, we then had lots of processes that were talked about, many spreadsheets. I left this in here just because they are so big and they are used for everything. And students will need to make sure that they know how to do that. And being certified um, through our program is very helpful. Um, there's a whole huge other things for students. This is Spring Story. So she gave me from the beginning to the end. So seeing and hearing her path and just knowing how well she has done is just pretty exciting um, to me. So what are we going to do now with all this data? Because I have a lot of data. We are now going to, I've presented, so I've already talked about that. So we can go past those. So you know where and when I was presenting AIMS information. 
We're now this next summer, Gina Jones, who is my colleague, is on sabbatical this semester. She is doing kind of the same similar situation, but is focusing on tax. My least favorite, but I am covering her two tax classes. Hopefully by the end of the semester, I'll still have my hair. Um, but we're going to look at all of our information. And in the summer, we're going to look at our curriculum and see where we need to be taking all of the data we've received and how we can improve even more for our students as far as what we teach them in the accounting program. And I would like very much to thank you for the opportunity to do this. I've been thinking about doing it for a very long time. My dad's a CPA and has been for years and years and still is at 80 plus. And I didn't want his route. And so it was great to get back into industry. I mean, I worked in industry for years and years, but I've been in education for over 30. So it was very nice to see um, actual work again. And there are still 10 keys. That is really exciting <laughs> on everybody's desk when I walked in. So, you know, we need to go back to that. And everybody says it's because of the tape. So that might help you all like accounting more if you had a 10 key. <laughs> Thank you, Lori. So, are there questions for Lori regarding her sabbatical? I just want to ask, Lori, you taught at Fort Lepton, did you not? I did. I taught at Fort Lepton High School for numerous years. Um, Remember your name? Yes, 10 years. And was that was exciting, too. Did a lot of future business leaders of America and a lot of training at that age as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all of this. Oh, um, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Dr. Rothamer? Does anyone want the binder? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Lori. Uh, next up, um, virtually, we have uh, Professor Ridgway representing our English department. Hello, thank you for having me today. Uh, my research uh, over the past year was on advancing student access to academic literacy skills uh, in order to expand our reading tutoring programs here at Ames. Uh, we have a writing center that we're working to expand into becoming a reading and writing center. So I was doing the research to back end the services that we're going to be providing to students on academic literacy acquisition. How do we learn not to decode words? Students come to college knowing um, a basic set of reading skills, but how do we take information in a college level textbook, in academic articles, in the digital information that's being presented through e-textbooks these days and open educational resources? How do we take that information and learn it, remember it, process it as students. Um, so we are now going to be expanding into reading tutoring. We have a tutor hired and uh, taking all the research that I've done over the past year. Now I'm working in person this semester with our reading tutor on um, training what are the skills that students can come in. They're going to bring their textbooks with them and work with the tutor on how do you read? How do you understand this textbook? How is that different than you read and understand a scientific article that is given to you? How do you take um, five research articles that you've done for a project, synthesize, understand that information, and then turn it into a research paper? Um, so I'm very excited about the support that the college has given to give this new service um, to students. Um, I want to especially thank uh, Evan Oakley, the department chair um, of English, that he was willing and supportive of me taking a year away from teaching in the English department in order to do this research that doesn't just benefit the English department, but is going to reach students in any class across the college. Um, and also to Laurel Waller, who um, directs all of the tutoring services for Ames. When I went to Laurel and said, okay, we've been working on um, the writing center. What about the reading side of things? She said, yes, let's do it and worked behind the scenes to create the reading tutoring position that I, I now get to train and support and uh, promote to the faculty on campus. So a huge shout out to Laurel Waller for the work that she's done to support this, uh, this project as well. Um, this was my project. This is what I spent a year um, researching and building out behind the scenes. So um, if you have any questions, I would love to talk about them. 
Thank you, Jennifer. Any questions for Jennifer on her sabbatical research? No? No. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, finally, we have from English and Humanities, Dr. Saylor. Thank you. Oh, I just love this sabbatical benefit. It is the very best. You know, as teachers, we know what to do to help improve things for our students. We just don't always have the time to do those things. And all these projects that you've just heard about take so much time and such a deep dive. Um, it's really exciting to be able to do that, to know that you can make that improvement in the classroom. Um, you don't need to advance through my slides. That'll be okay. So I knew that I needed to do a deep dive into diversity, equity, and inclusion. I wanted to learn more about what's the latest on good practices for that. But also I knew that in the classes I teach, I needed to be expanding that curriculum to be bringing in more groups than were covered by the textbooks that I was using. And so what I did for my project, I started off by looking at the, the DEI research and best practices. And I really landed on something that could help me accomplish both my DEI goals and the, the goal to expand that curriculum by creating two OER textbooks for my classes. Um, that's going to increase access for my students so that no student has to come to class and not do the reading because they can't afford the book. And it allows me to bring in a whole bunch more content and, a, and lots more options for students. So I created um, two classes without textbooks. I created my early civilizations class with um, all kinds of open source images and ancient texts that are available online now. And tons of PBS videos and BBC videos that I could find for free or put on our media service and get all that stuff together, scholarly articles and museum tours um, that could happen electronically. So I assembled all of that for the early civilizations class. And then for my world mythology class, I went through a bazillion books on world mythology and open source texts to take new cool excerpts uh, and compiled those into an almost 150 page book textbook for students so that they could have that for free. Um, because I think I'm going to be able to talk everybody into using those resources now in my department. For the ancient world class, for example, that textbook that we used to use cost about $75 per student. Uh, that's going to save students about $7,500 a year. And for world mythology, we have a lot more sections of that, that those textbooks cost about $102. So that'll probably be a student savings of about $26,520 per year. Um, so I'm real excited about that. That's, it's going to make my class better. It's going to help students participate better. And it is a way more diverse curriculum, which I like. I am also excited to share all of these things with um, the people I supervise, with my mentee, with faculty at FTLC conferences and such. Um, so this is a gift that we'll keep giving for quite some time. Questions? Thank you, Rebecca. Do you have questions for Rebecca on her sabbatical? Marilyn has a comment might have to be talking to you about some of the DEI. I think it's anytime we see where things are today, but I have to honestly say, I think I had a misperception of sabbatical after the four presentations, because um, I think about sabbatical and I think, oh, I'm going to go hike a mountain or something, you know, and I look at the work that you guys have done. Holy smokes. Um, I'm impressed. And I, I think what's really fun is we see your energy that you seem a little bit refreshed it's an excitement. It's bringing the new best education and the new best tools. And so I have a whole different view about sabbatical. This is my first time of listening to sabbatical. Um, but I'm like over the moon impressed. Thank you. Thank you. 
voices. Um, I would just like to say I'd love to take the class. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds really exciting. <laughs> Read the book. So. so thank you, Rebecca. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so one question for you, um, as in the new format, after we discussed in your retreat, uh, we are not doing individual highlights, but they're all in your packet. So if you have any questions about the highlights that review, you reviewed by division, then we can answer them now. Um, otherwise, we'll move on. No questions about any of the highlights in the packet. Okay. Uh, one thing I do want to do at the end of your packet, you have the employee report. Are there any supervisors in the audience that have new employees that you want to introduce? Yes, please take the podium. Hello, Dr. Bornstein board. Um, I'm here on behalf of the Natural Sciences Department to introduce you all to our newest full-time uh, lab coordinator, Bridget Fox. And uh, we're really excited and very fortunate to have her, and we can already feel her very positive uh, influence around us. So, Wonderful. Welcome, Bridget. Any other supervisors that want to introduce their employees? No? Okay. Chair, that concludes the President's report for September. Okay, thank you, Dr. B and Russ and um, all the presenters. Uh, that, was, that was an awesome report. A lot of great information. Um, next on the agenda is reflections and comments from board members about AIMS. And this comes out of our retreat uh, and uh, a little bit of a new format. Um, I want to make sure that we uh, clarify that this is uh, uh, comments regarding aims or future topics as opposed to assessment of the board meeting and things like that. So uh, uh, if you need a minute to think about that, that's fine. But uh, uh, the question is, do you have any reflections and comments about aims? I would just make one quick comment, and uh, it relates to our setting today and looking at our aviation training program and the deliberations we went through in considering moving out here and to look at what it has done for our aviation training program is phenomenal. Okay. I think I have to stay for the last couple minutes. Uh, if you are um, joining us via Zoom, would you make sure that you are on mute because we hear somebody chatting? It's just a great reminder to us as board members that went through those deliberations and so forth. That you've got to keep an open mind and keep looking forward. So great job, Eric and your team. Well, in continuation of what Jean says, I wasn't here, but I mean, the fact that if we're thinking about future stuff on Ames, um, the fact that we might be eligible for the, the new aviation um, program, the AMT, AMT program would be wonderful. Um, I'm really excited and very pleased that the, the professors or the teachers that just went on sabbatical learned so much and for to help with our future um, students. Very excited about that. And um, once again, I'm excited to see what the, the foundation board has done. I'm really impressed with that. And thank you for, for the opportunity to have the meeting here. It's spectacular. I'll just keep going off of I, I sure. your amazement, you know? But I, um, I watched Terry and I watched Amy and I think about the new programs. I think about what Jean said about the aviation program and just that, where we headed and that vision for the new programming and certificates. And uh, it's just very exciting. So great work to the teams. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, Heidi. 
Um, yeah, I'd like to take a, a, a little bit uh, comment off of Gene's comment uh, and certainly wholeheartedly agree. Uh, the aviation program is an example, as is the public safety uh, program um, that uh, Ames has developed. I mean, we've developed whole new campuses. It didn't all just happen on the Greeley campus. It was uh, the vision was such that we were able to expand. And uh, um, it, back like when we decided to go to Fort Lupton and, uh, and, and Loveland, it's just, it's just amazing the vision that people have had about Ames Community College and what it could become and uh, what they have done based on feedback and need from our communities. It, it's incredible. As Gene said, you know, it was, it was controversial when we moved out here, but, uh, and there were comments made about uh, a maintenance program and that could never be, that would never happen at Ames and but yet look where we might possibly be. Uh, so uh, we never say no. Uh, we do our feasibility studies. We look into it, and if it's feasible, uh, it appears to me at least what's brought to the board is that then we proceed. So, and uh, we're, we're doing amazing things. And to hear Dr. Bornstein say that we are the only college in the state of Colorado to have positive enrollment is just absolutely amazing to me, but um, <laughs> uh, you know, we all know what our reputation is and we all help attribute uh, and contribute to that, uh, to that image. So um, we all, we do it as a team, we do it together, uh, we work together, we discuss together and we make decisions together. And I think it's, uh, it's huge where it's got us. So I, I just can't say enough good about Ames. So uh, with that, I'll stop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Thank you. Is Mark, are you out there? You got some? Yeah, to I'm out there somewhere. I'm probably about 6,400 miles away. I can't, I don't know how far it really is, but it's far away. Um, no, this is a neat little aspect of our meeting that we were enjoying. And, you know, regarding our college, it's one of the best investments this community has made in itself and continues every year for the last 50 some years now that we're, we've been enjoying it from the programs we offer and the success that we hear comments, our, our alumni, you know, we're, we got a lot to be proud of. And, you know, the, the neat thing is this college is bigger than all of us, you know, and that's what I appreciate. It makes itself important to the community. Every faculty member, every staff member, every cabinet member, all of us are so proud of what this college means. Now, the other part, bringing up new subject matter, I'm not sure we all want to open up Pandora's box so quickly, but I have some comments at the next meeting regarding what I would like to see, as I've always made those noteworthy. But the long to short is, I am so proud of what the staff and faculty and this board has done regarding putting together programs and opportunities for these students, both young and old. Think about it. Um, it looks like my internet connection is unstable, so you might not be hearing all of what I'm saying, but long to short, thank you, and I might be out of power, but we'll move on. Well, thank you, Mark. Uh, I think I heard most of what you said. Uh, you sound like you're on top of the Eiffel Tower or something. Are you? I was earlier today, yes. <laughs> Which I was trying to find a picture to put in the background that just showed the, the shadow of the Eiffel Tower on the ground below me. <laughs> but I couldn't figure out how to do it on this computer. So I'll move on. <laughs> well, thanks for checking in, sir. Thank you. Okay, uh, next um, is the assessment of the board meeting. How do you think the board meeting went? Any comments? 
uh, you have all of the items that we have listed, uh, and we typically we don't discuss those individually, but I take kind of a summary of them. So, or highlight any of them that you feel you want to. Anybody want to go first, Gene? I'll go ahead and just uh, say you know, it, it's nice to hear about all the good things we've been doing in the past and so forth, the good re reports and so forth. But uh, as Marilyn already commented, so, some of the new programs that we approved today are really exciting. And uh, it, it really addresses that uh, building a workforce for our community. Uh, it, it, you all are right on the bullseye with your development of new programs in what is needed in this community. Uh, so it, it's, it's, uh, it's nice to hear about the good job we've done in the past, but it's exciting to hear about the things we're gonna do in the future. Thank you, Jim. Anybody else? Um, I'll just be quick. I thought the meeting went well. Um, I'm very excited about the new programs that have been um, accepted, and especially the nursing program. Um, I think that'll bring a lot more students. And just once again, congratulations to the increase in enrollment. I know it's, it's just not one person. It's a multitude of people and alumni talking about the about the community college and everyone's just doing a great job. I think the word is getting out there that Ames is here and here to stay, even though we've been here for 50 years, we're here to stay and continue. So thank you. Thank you, Heidi. Marilyn? I don't have much more to say, just a great meeting. Thank you. Well, it says it all. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. And I would agree. It was a great meeting. Uh, exciting stuff. Um, I love to, to see us discuss where, where Ames has been, where we've come from, and uh, most of all, where we're going. And uh, I think we've got exciting things happening right now and probably even more exciting things uh, in the future. It looks very bright uh, with everybody thinking uh about moving forward and um, as we all say and what will get us there Ames is all in so we just keep thinking that way and uh, I think our meeting exemplified uh, how we're all thinking and where we're all moving with Ames so uh, I want to say thank you for a very good meeting and thank you to everyone here and everyone out there in Zoom land uh, for participating and uh, and having such a great meeting. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Uh, is there anything else anybody would like to say? If not, meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Please drive safely on your way home.